MP for Bimbla constituency and former defense minister Dominic Nitewo has meanwhile rejected claims he invited the military into the Chamber of Parliament. Though the soldiers were seen on live TV making their way into the chamber, Mr. Nitewo suggested they may have come in at the instance of the state security. Let's now speak with Dr. Kujo Asante, who is Director of Advocacy and Policy Engagement at CDD Ghana. Doc, many have condemned the behavior of parliamentarians during the inauguration of the eighth parliament now you've also had the blame side uh, the blame coming from both sides as to who started first and who needed to respond but should this be the conduct of parliamentarians yeah, good evening to your viewers um yeah, sorry about the audio no i think i think it was i mean to say the least appalling and then on and on uh, at some point, it was, you know, extremely embarrassing. Um, there, there's so many issues that, that that whole event has raised, you know, for us that we need to reflect on. But a lot of people did not cover themselves in, in glory. And uh, this will be on YouTube for many years to come. And uh, they are, they are children will see uh, some of the, the, the terrible behavior that you know they they engaged in as they try to resolve this stuff and and really uh, I mean one would say that at least there should have been um, you know many days before we even got to this point there should have been a real serious effort between the, both parties to try to resolve some of the issues before coming you know to this day because everybody knew that there was a lot of acrimony there was a lot of mistrust around this issue and there were all these attempts by both parties to try to uh you know weaken one side or the other to affect the um, uh what's it called the uh the, uh the numbers for the election of the speaker so i mean you know that that kind of um all kinds of altercations right in front of you know the whole world and there was there was it it doesn't seem to be that there was any real attempt to try to negotiate and build consensus before coming to this point and now we were left with you know uh, this process fortunately we were able to at least find a compromise but a lot of damage has been done and 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 and, and uh, i mean the condemnations go on but for me, I'm, I worry now more even about going forward, particularly because we were hoping that the NDC would, you know, build on that. Uh, that it's, it seems like everybody have returned to their their positions and they are going to continue this type of acrimonious behavior uh, in this parliament. And if that is going to be the case, it's Ghanaians that will suffer because no business will be done Doc, uh, have, you know, in, in, in Parliament. The clerk to Parliament has also been blamed for not being firm. The reason the situation degenerated. You agree? I completely disagree. And I've disagreed with, with colleagues privately because I think that, you know, they forget that in a lot of this, uh, particularly in Parliament, it's not just about the law. Uh, it's also about, you know, the leadership of of parliament working together, you know. So if the, the, the leaders go behind closed doors on a particular ruling and based on the, uh, you know, the, the ruling of the clerk, they are able to find a compromise and come back and work with that compromise I mean, you can't blame the, 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 the clerk. And, you know, this is the first time. Often, I, I, I don't know if you recall any time, you know, in our uh, uh, fourth parliament where a clerk was put in this kind of position to actually interpret certain parts of the standing order. The, the, the design of this particular uh, process, which is the election, it's a pretty straightforward matter. Often you get a, a communique from the Electoral Commission listing the numbers, uh, the people who are, eligible and basically you just go ahead to vote but of course these late challenges from um you know the at the courts some coming as as, as late as 5 p.m 
and the clerk is supposed to do this interpretation, which the constitution did not envisage. All right. So I don't. I mean, when people say, I know uh, Mr. Sirosia very well. Uh, he's a very calm person. He's seen it all. Uh, so it's not a matter of firmness, as in shouting. Uh, I mean, are people suggesting that he should be ordering marshals to remove uh, leaders if, if they didn't sit down or they were misbehaving? It doesn't work like that in parliament. You know, so, um, you know, he tried his best within the scenario to work with the leaders, allow them as much latitude to express themselves so that they can find a compromise. And then, you know, because the, the speaker, if the speaker was there, basically the speaker will carry the will of members, right? And often they work together to make sure that they can they can all reach a compromise. So I want to put the blame on the clerk. Mm -hmm. I think the blame has to go to the leaders of, of, of the two parties who set themselves up for this, you know, very disgraceful act. Um, and for me, the key is how do you move forward? Because it looks like, as I said, they've returned to their posture of, of you know, everybody standing their ground and, and refusing to, you know, to compromise. Don't but that, the, that is the, not going to help them. The, and if that, it doesn't help them, it doesn't help us. The, the highest disappointment for many, though, was uh, the invasion of... Uh, armed military officers into the chamber. What do you make of the scenario? I think it was, it's, for me, it was a low point uh, of that whole incident. I mean, that, that picture, and I've already seen uh, international media pick on that, you know, uh, which I think unfairly, but they pick on that, you know, which, which uh, the pictures just didn't, I mean, military officers entering parliament, it's just not, uh, it's not done. And it's like, it's people don't appreciate uh, the democratic structures. And that even, you know, there are some parliaments where people are throwing chairs and so on. And that's why you have marshals of parliament. They are there to secure, uh, you know, and ensure that people don't injure themselves or anything like that. And if the marshals are overwhelmed or feel that they need more people, that's a different, you know, scenario. They should be in control at all times. All right. So that's the that that's really I think it was unfortunate, uh, but it did it did sort of reflect some of the excessive use of of military in the last couple of years, and I think we really need to examine that because it's not helpful for the military. Uh, I mean, they will come and do their job, but really it's, it's not helpful, you know. But but I mean, the whole thing I said was really disgraceful, and people just you know, completely lost it. I mean, this is right before the whole world. Um, and they lost it. They couldn't hold them to their temper. Um, but a lot of this could have been avoided if there was a lot of, um, you know, pre-legislative discussions and engagement. If it is part of the fact that people had just come out of elections and this was what statemanship would have demanded, that they knew that they needed to talk in spite of their uh, different positions. So it still for, remains the same. I'm if grateful they don't for talk, your time. Dr. Yeah. Kojo Asante is uh, Director of Advocacy of Policy Engagement at CDDGAR.